Google Groups is a great way to communicate with a group of people. So to access your Google Groups, you'll go to groups.google.com and you'll come to a page that looks like this. And to create a new group, we're going to click where it says create group. So from here, you'll give your group a name. We're just going to call this a test group. Um, that name will also become the email address associated with the group. Now you might need to be a bit creative here because you know you can only have so many groups. For example, if I go to click next, that this email is already taken, so we'll give it some numbers. You could also give it a group description if you would like. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the next step is to choose the privacy settings. Um, who can search for the group? If this is going to be a group of, say, students or parents, teachers, things like that, you most likely don't want to have this group public. So you probably want to say that only group members can search for the group. Now, if it's something bigger than that, maybe, um, I don't know, more of a community group, then maybe you would have it so that it is searchable. Who can join the group? People that you've invited. Anyone can ask to join or anyone can join. Again, I would not recommend the anyone can join. Just your, I would say keep it a little bit more secure than that. What can people do within the group? Now, the left-hand side, this is group owners. You are the group owner. So typically the group owner should be able to do everything. A group manager is a step down from that. That might be an assistant director. Um, your booster president, um, your drum major, things like that. Group managers are going to have more permissions than just regular group members, but not quite as much as you. And then the group members are the, the people in the group. So think about who you want to be able to view the various communications, the conversations, who you want to be able to post, and then who can view the different members. Adding members. This is where you're going to add people to your group. So You'll do this by email address. So let's say, for example, I'm going to invite myself. You would type in or copy in all of the various email addresses here, an invitation message saying like, you have been invited to join this group. Um, the person would get an email and then they would have a link to click to join the group. The other option is you can directly add people. So you're not really giving them a choice. <laughs> um, this isn't as bad as it sounds. So again, if you're making a group of, say, all of the students in your ensemble, you might just directly add them. And in this case, you can add members. You can also add managers this way. You're going to send a welcome message that will say, you have been added to this group. So it's going to tell people this has happened. Um, next, you will... Um, You'll see the option to determine what kind of subscription they will get. Will they get every email will come through to their inbox? Will they get just a digest of the email? So maybe at the end of the day or the end of the week, they get a list of all the different communications that came through. Um, if this is something that's being used, again, for school communications, I would recommend that they get each email. Um, and then you're going to create your group. Confirm that you're not a robot. And away you go. All right, so let's go into this group and see what it looks like. First place I want you to check out is down here, group settings. Here are some additional settings you can set up. Um, the group, the email, that stuff really shouldn't be changed at this point, but you have some, you can go back and, and edit or adjust any of the other um, permissions, such as who can see the group, who can start conversations, things like that. Privacy, um, whether you're what you're going to be displaying as far as people's names and email addresses. And again, the posting policies. Who is allowed to post messages to the group? The people here on the left-hand side, that's going to be the people who are in the group. And it'll tell you their role, whether they're a member, a manager, or an owner. Um, it'll also say what kind of subscription they have and if that they're allowed to post. So we set our settings up so that members were allowed to post. And then finally, conversations. This is where the good stuff happens, right? This is your communication hub. So anytime you want to send a communication, send a message to your group, you click on new conversation. You'll see it looks just like an email. So up here in the from, it'll either say your name. You could also choose to have it come from the group. You don't want it come from looking like it's coming from you personally, but coming from the group. You can add that. You'll give it a subject. You will type the body of the email. You can, you know, you've got formatting options. You can add attachments. You can add um, 
photos, things like that. And then you'll post your message. What happens when you post the message? An email gets sent to everyone in the group and that also gets um, cataloged here in these conversations. So let's say you have parent communications. Well, the parent will get the email and they can also come to their group to see a running log of all of the emails that have been sent in one spot, which is really nice. When you look at it, it says where it came from. It came from the group and then, then there's the body of it. Okay. So that's a really brief way to get started with Google Groups. I think, again, they're wonderful for communication and it's something definitely worth checking out. 